In this video, we're going to be covering creating the network data set for the ArcGIS Indoors information model. The creation of the network data set involves several geoprocessing tools. The tools in the Indoor Network Toolset use a pathway-based approach to automate the network creation process within the building. The workflow involved in creating the network data set includes generating preliminary pathways, creating floor transitions, thinning the network, and then creating a final data set. This data set will ultimately be published to be used in multiple applications. Your final product will have a complete network data set throughout the entire building and transitions between each floor. Let's get started. Generate Pathways Geoprocessing tool allows you to create a preliminary pathway which extends in every walkable space inside of a facility. These lines are then cut and buffered along walls and other navigation obstructions where they exist. Pathway size is determined according to the narrowest doorway in your facility so that line network can extend into every other unit. To begin generating a pathway, open up the project that contains your ArcGIS Indoors information model. This should be an already existing ArcGIS Pro project. In the catalog pane, you're going to expand geoprocessing, toolboxes, and underneath of indoors tools and indoors network, you're going to double click on generate pathways. The input workspace is going to be the geo database that's contained in the ArcGIS indoors information model. The detail field type will be use type. For detail barriers, you're going to select all of the line types that apply. Commonly, these include walls, columns, windows, or permanent furniture that cannot be traversed. The detail about barriers values are populated once you have selected the line type attribute. As a quick tip, you can select this circle in order to check off each individual wall type line type that you want. Click Add. For the network density parameter, use the pathway size. The default is 0.6 meters. We're going to filter by facility, selecting building L, and by levels, and we're going to run that tool. Once your geoprocessing tool completes, navigate to the catalog. In your database, you'll find prelim network. Prelim pathways, click and drag into that to the map. You now have the beginning of a preliminary network. The next step in our process is creating floor transitions. Floor transitions are network features that are connecting levels together. They're vertical 3D lines that can represent elevators, stairs, or escalators. Historically, these features have been created 3D by clipping and, and snapping each start and end point vertices of each transition to the transition above and below. If you have more than one floor in your facility, you're going to need to use 3D floor transition features. To get started, in the geoprocessing pane, expand toolboxes. Under indoors tools and indoors network, you're going to see create floor transitions. The input workspace, much like before, is going to be the geodatabase where the uh, ArcGIS Indoors Information Model is located. Unit type field is going to be use type. Unit elevator transitions is going to be simply elevator. And stairway transitions would be stairway. We're also going to select our facilities. And we're going to run that tool. Once 
Once this geoprocessing tool is completed, we're going to transition this map over to a scene by clicking View and converting to Local Scene. As you can see, when you convert into a 3D scene, our 3D layers are also incorporated into that. We still need to add the transitions that we just created. So underneath the building L geodatabase and in prelim network, add in prelim transitions. To begin the process of making realistic 3D staircases, I find that it's easiest to move each vertice to the beginning and ending of each staircase. To do this, we're going to edit, modify, vertices. Enable snapping in order to get the most accurate points. As a quick tip, holding the C key allows you to pan easily when you're making edits. Next, I'm going to add another vertice to the line segment. And I'm going to change the Z value to match the first one. Now that these are at, at the exact same height, we can move them across. This is going to make your 3D transitions look like actual staircases. Moving these vertices will take a little bit of patience and practice until you get it right. Save the layer. And now also go into modify and duplicate the vertical. This will allow us to create a second platform above the first in the model. You may have to snip these vertices to the transitions as well. Save your edits. And now you have full transitions. Now that we have the preliminary pathways and preliminary transitions created, we're going to now thin the network. The Thin Pathways Geoprocessing tool calculates routes between selected routable location points and thins the network to create a final network data set. Routable locations are typically points of interest and event point feature classes that were loaded when creating the ArcGIS Indoors information model. To thin the network, we're going to use the Thin Pathways tool. Under Analysis and Tools, in the Indoors Network Toolbox, click on Thin Pathways. Our input workspace is going to be the same database that we've been working in. Our routable locations are going to be our places and things, retail and services, and safety and security. Filter the facility by building and by the levels. We can now run the tool. This one will take a little while. After the completion of the Thin Pathways Geoprocessing tool, you should be able to add in your pathways and transitions from the network dataset. Your completed project 
will look something like this. Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe. Thank mm -hmm. you.